Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, our wonderful, beautiful, and glorious viewers. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria. Today is Saturday, the 1st of April, 2023. And this is also the commencement of the second quarter of the year. We give thanks and praise and glory to God for keeping us, for protecting us, for seeing us through in the first quarter. We've had our elections and everything, and we give thanks to God. Join with me as we read from the scripture, as we study together at the feet of the Lord. Our topic for consideration is raised in glory. Raised in glory. And our text is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll begin our reading from verse 35. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll begin to read from verse 35. Let's read together. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed, he gives his own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh. Animals have another. Birds, another. And fish, another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind. And the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor the moon another and the stars another and star differs from star in splendor so will it be with the resurrection of the dead the body that is sown in perishable it is raised in perishable it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, a life-given spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortar with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable, and the mortar with immortality, then the saying that is written will come through. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. 
always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a powerful word we have this morning on this first day of the month of April for us to consider. Shall we pray before we go on? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for the first quarter that has ended. Thank you for all that you gave to us and all that you did for us. Thank you for protecting and preserving and giving us your deliverance and showing yourself mighty on our behalf and also upon our land and our nation, Nigeria. Lord, this is the second quarter of the year. We trust that the almighty hand, the everlasting hand, the gracious hand, the merciful hand, the hand of deliverance, the hand of healing, the hand of protection, and of blessings and provision shall be upon us and shall be around us and shall uphold us and see us through. So we decree that this quarter it shall be well with us. As we learn from your faith this morning, please speak to us in the power of your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts. Open our minds to understand that which we ought to know concerning your second coming, concerning the resurrection, and concerning being raised in glory. Thank you, Father, because you will speak. Glory be to your name, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to share a hymn that I believe, you know, also has a link to our topic today. And it's a hymn titled, Who Are These Like Stars Appearing? A hymn translated by Frances Elizabeth Cox and the author being Henrich Talbot in 1719. A very powerful hymn. If you know the hymn, you can sing along with me. Who are these like stars appearing? This before God's throne who stand? Each a golden crown is wearing. Who are all the glorious band? Hallelujah, hark the song. Praising loud their heavenly King. Who are these of dazzling brightness? This in God's own truth array, clad in robes of purest whiteness, robes whose lustre never shall fade. Never be touched by time's rude hand. Whence come all this glorious band? These are they who have contended for their Savior's on along wrestling until life was ended following not the sinful throng these who will their fight sustain Triumph through the Lamb have gained. These are they whose hearts were riven, so with hope and anguish tread. Who oh, in prayerful oft have striven with the God they glorified. Now their painful conflict, all oh, God has be them weep no more. These, like priests, have watched and waited 
Offering up to Christ their will, soul and body consecrated, day and night to serve Him still. Now in God's most holy place, bless this stand before his face. Amen. This is what we are called to become. Raised in glory. To be raised in glory requires that we persevere. Require that we travel. Require that we maintain our robes in righteousness. We carry ourselves in moderation. And we walk the way of Christ. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church in current concerning, you know, the resurrection, concerning how the saints will be gathered to heaven. And of course, there were confusions of all sorts. They were asking, how would the dead be raised? What kind of body would the dead have? And Paul begins this, look, why are you confused? When you sow a seed or you plant a seed, grain of seed, whatever kind of seed it is, it does not come back to you the same way that you planted it. It assumes a new body. It assumes a new image. It assumes a new dimension. It comes out in a different connotation. So it is not like the way it was sown or planted that it will come out. No. So it is that when we die, would not be like this. Yes, Jesus had a material body, but it was essentially a transformed body. And no wonder he told Mary, don't touch me because I've not ascended to my father. I've not been glorified yet. When I ascend to my father, I'll be glorified. So that material body, of course, will be transformed and turned and changed to the glory and to the image of Christ. That is clear. And of course, Paul tells them there are different kinds of bodies. There's the body of animals. This is not to say that animals will resurrect. There are some people who think that animals and all of that, dogs and what have you, will resurrect. No, 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 no. It's only those who are in Christ, those who are believers. He says, but God gives it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed, he gives his own body. So those who are in Christ, those who are born again, they will receive a new kind of body. And verse 40 says to us, there are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. When we die here on earth, we carry the earthly body that can be ridden and punctured and tortured and subsumed and overwhelmed by sicknesses, by diseases, by pain, and by suffering. This is the earthly body. But when we die and resurrect, and indeed we shall resurrect with him, those of us who are Christians, those of us who are believers, who will carry what is known as a heavenly body. And the song that I rendered talks about it. They were different. They were asking, who are these? They were different. They had gone through the travail, gone through the suffering, gone through the pain in the world, and now they carry the heavenly body. Paul continues to say, even the sun has one kind of splendor, and the moon another, and the stars another, and stars differ from each other. Trying to say that we're not the same, we're not in the same class with animals. We're not in the same class with birds, but we are the sons and daughters of God, that have put our trust and confidence in him. And because of that, when we die, we shall resurrect. We will not rot in the grave. What remains in the grave is the body of sin, the body of sickness. But the spirit rises and the spirit gets a new body that is transformed. So he says in verse 42, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. This body is perishable. So people who, you know, take so much time to build the body, 
in whatever form they do, whether through physical exercise, through weightlifting and all kinds of you know, muscle enhancing exercises and food and drugs. Wonderful, beautiful. Those who do daily do exercises, great, no problem. Those who, you know, want to do makeups and do all, all kinds of things with their body and or, or to their body, you know, to make the body look so nice, it is perishable. It will perish. It will die. It can be ridden, destroyed by sickness. So this body, Paul says, it is what? Perishable. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised in perishable. Only when Christ has occupied that life, that soul, then when that soul dies, or when that, when that body dies, when that person dies, then the person is raised in what? Imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. This body may suffer dishonor. This body may suffer abuse. This body may suffer any kind of thing. You know, there are people who have, you know, who, who abuse others, who torture others who make others into their slaves. They are only able to kill the body, but they are not able to kill the soul. So they can dishonor the body. They can put them in prison. You know, you hear people who are, who, you know, that they put them in prison. Says, like Paul says, I, I, I may be in chains. I may be in prison, but the gospel of Christ is not in chains. So it can be, it can be buried or sown in dishonor, but raised in glory. It is, it is sown in weakness. I mean, you know, Paul is just talking about how our body is. This body is perishable. This body can suffer dishonor. And this body is also weak. As you grow older in age, you also become weak. Sickness can make you weak. But when you are raised, Paul says, it is raised in power. The power of Christ is able to quicken our mortal bodies and to give it life. It is sown a natural body. But glory be to God, it is raised a spiritual body. So it is not this body that you carry, but it is Christ in this body that makes all the difference. And Paul says, if there's a natural body, there's also a spiritual body. And that's what we're going to get. The first Adam has come, but the second Adam is a life-giving spirit. Do you know this second Adam? Have you given your life to this second Adam? Are you born again? Are you born again? So Paul talks about the characteristics of the resurrection, you know, or the resurrection body in the verses that we have considered. And it shows us that it's important we know that it is not for this body that we need to do everything to get to heaven. It is to the spirit man. Yes, we must care for our body. Yes, we must look after our health. Yes, we must eat the right food. Yes, we must do exercises. They are good. But bodily exercise profited little. But godliness, holiness, and contentment has profit both in this life and the life to come. And so, the spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And then Paul continues in verse 50. He said, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, Paul tells them the condition the requirement to be raised in glory. So it is not the works you do in church. They are beautiful. They are wonderful. I mean, you can do great works in the church. You can, you can give money. You can do anything. But what is important is this body crucified. Like Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 The life I live, I no longer live by myself. But I live by faith in the Son of God who has died and suffered and, of course, raised me from the life of sin to the life of glory. So he says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. No. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's a life that is crucified. It's a life that has died to sin to the flesh, to the world, and to Satan, and a life in Christ that can inherit the kingdom of God. And he says, we shall be changed. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a flash, in the tune of an eye. So when we die as Christians, there's a better place to go to. 
We're not just in this world to live our lives anyhow. And then you say, when I die, say, it doesn't matter. That's it. No, there's an end. There's an end in heaven. There's an end where we shall be raised again in glory. Raised in righteousness. I mean, Paul says, if, if in this world we have hope, then we have all men most miserable. If only in this life, if only in this life we have hope, we have all men most miserable. No, as Christians, our hope, our trust is not in the economy of Nigeria. Our hope, our trust is not in whoever is, has been elected leader or governor or whatever it is. Our hope is in heaven. We are pilgrims. We are on a journey. We are on a race. We must keep ourselves. We must comport ourselves. We must organize ourselves. We must permeate this body. We must discipline this body. We must bring it under control and under subjection. You know, when Jesus was tempted in the devil, Matthew chapter 4, you know, by, 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 by the devil, three times the devil confronted him. He confronted him back with the word of God. Three times the devil tempted him, tried him, tried to break him, to melt him. But he stood on the truth of the word of God. And because he knew he had a mission and a purpose here on earth to save humanity, he would not let the devil bring him down. In the same way, you must discipline your body. You must possess your body in righteousness and in moderation. You are on a journey. You are on a journey to heaven. You are on a journey to eternity. You are on a journey to meet Christ. And so you are looking to be raised in glory and in honor. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the immortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. When we die and we are raised in glory, death no longer has power, no longer has dominion and authority over us. It has been swallowed up in victory. And this is the confidence that the Apostle Paul had that he said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 following. He says, For I, my life has been poured out as a drink offering. And no wonder in Philippians 1 to 1, he says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He was not afraid of death because he knew that he would get a new body and would get a new life with Christ in heaven. Are you so afraid of death? Are you so conscious of death? It's only in Christ Jesus that you can overcome death. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Because the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. When we live within the law of Christ, we fear no death. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory. So Paul now concludes and says, Therefore, brothers, for you to be able to make it, to receiving that body that is heavenly, and to be raised in glory, it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, stand firm. Stand firm. In what? In the Lord. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in him is not in vain. Occupy yourself with godly things. Occupy yourself with spiritual things. Occupy yourself with the things that matter. Beloved. The question is, are you preparing to partake in the first resurrection with a new spiritual body? You must determine to live and die in Christ, being steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of God. Are you within the body of Christ? And are you a child of God? And are you born again? And are you striving continually, continually for the price of the high calling in Christ Jesus? People of God, remember, this world is not our home. We are only passing through. There's a better home where all tears will be wiped away, where there will be no sickness, there will be no sorrow, there will be no death, there will be no sin. It's only in heaven. And only those who have put their faith and confidence in him would have that experience and have the resurrected body and be raised in glory. I pray for you today. Our prayer says, Dear Lord, thank you for the hope of the resurrection. Help me to prepare to be like Christ. Keep the hope of resurrection steady, firm, and clear. It doesn't matter what you are passing through, what you are going through. Keep the hope of resurrection clear, firm, steady, and focus on it. That's your only hope. And I pray for you today as this new quarter has started. 
it will start well with you. You will end it well. Whatever encumbrances that you have had in the first quarter, I command them to expire in the name of Jesus Christ. And I break the power and the stronghold and the authority and the, the curse of the enemy over your lives in any form that they manifest. I release you from the power of sickness, from the power of sudden death, from the power of evil and danger, and whatever attacks of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed today, and the whole of your life in this quarter and this year is blessed. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website, www.acnntv.com.